Hello, my name is Andy Herring. I'm a professor at Texas A&M University in the Animal Science Department, and I teach our senior beef cow production class and do research in beef cow. And I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking to, talking to you today about hormones. This is something that's in the, the news uh, quite a bit, and a lot of our producers use hormones in some of the products, or, or they may not realize that they're using them. We commonly use implants that go in the back of cow ears to promote growth but there's a lot of misconceptions about uh, what those uh, implants do and what impact it might have on the consumer so I actually brought some information with me today in case you have some uh, discussions with people and want to have some more detailed information to share with them I think most of you know that when you use implants in cattle that you always need to follow the, the directions on use and things like that but implants compared to some of our other uh, products such as antibiotics or things like that don't have a withdrawal time and so they go in the back of the animal's ear the ears not eaten but the hormone that is uh, released from the implant is there constantly and throughout the animal's body through the bloodstream so that bothers some people and there's been some things reported that says that hormone levels in beef from implanted animals is higher than in uh, non implanted animals and that really depends upon which animal that you're talking about there so I wanted to read a couple things from a different uh, some research reports if you have any information or if you have any uh, if you want some more information about use of implants uh, and general guidelines then you can go to the Food and Drug Administration webpage and get some information there so here's a statement that was in the news uh, not too long ago. It has been documented that beef from animals implanted with growth promoting hormone implants has 40% more estrogen than beef from non implanted animals. That's a true statement, and that gets a lot of people upset. They don't realize that there's such a small amount that the 40% increase is still really minuscule. And what I mean by that is if you evaluate how much of the actual hormone is in the animal's bloodstream or in people's bloodstream then we're talking about levels that are tiny and we refer to those as as nanograms okay and so a nanogram is one billionth of a, of a gram so it's been documented that uh, beef from implanted steers may have something like about 0.8 to 0.9 nanograms uh, per three ounce serving as opposed to beef from implant animals might have 1.2 to 1.3. And that's where they're saying that there's a 40% increase. But let's put that in perspective. If you thought about how much estrogens there might be in some other foods, a three ounce serving of peanuts provides about 17,000 nanograms. And so that's 17,000 times as much as what we just said was in implanted beef. Uh, if we eat something like tofu, a three ounce serving of tofu has uh, approximately 19 million nanograms of estrogenic activity. So if you think about how much the increase in hormone there is compared to how much we normally produce in our bodies per day, it's also very small. So I'll read something else here from another report that talks about how much estradiol, which is the natural form of estrogen that we produce in our bodies, is produced. So adult men, are expected to produce somewhere around 27,000 to 68,000 nanograms of estradiol per day in our bodies. And if we're consuming beef from implanted animals, we're probably consuming somewhere around three to 84 nanograms, just to put things in perspective. And adult women would produce daily somewhere between 30,000 nanograms and 470,000 nanograms. And so if you think about the increase that we have in our meat levels compared to how much we normally produce in our bodies per day it's it's very small and we would not have these products approved if they weren't guaranteed to be safe there are some groups and some markets that say that meat from implanted animals um, is bad for us because there's increased hormone levels and that's really not based on any scientific um, evidence and so the fact that there's more hormones there is is true but relative to how much is there normally or how much we would get in other types of foods it, it's really pretty small so maybe that gives a little bit more perspective on talking to some different groups about hormones and beef from implanted animals